Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. Thank you for, for your patience if you've been waiting along for the, the stream to start. One of these days I will I will work out how much I can get done in two hours before I'm due to stream. Um, but today wasn't that day, unfortunately. But we're here now, so let's carry on. I'm going to drop down the, uh, the volume of our background music a little bit because when the game audio comes in that's going to be um, considerably louder. Okay, so I will stop that there. Good. So, um, statistics wise, uh, the, all the numbers I'm looking at for the stream are pretty good. Let me know how it's looking and sounding. Um, I would I would love to hear. This is my first time streaming with um, a new internet connection. Um, and I've been fairly conservative in how I've set the stream up as, as to how much um, uh, data it's going to be uh, transferring back and forth um, and it seems to be doing doing very well at that um, so hope well I mean at the moment it's just a loading screen isn't it when we see the game let me know how it's looking and sounding um, because that would be useful information thank you I'll say hello to um, whoever's in chat everybody is welcome uh, humans and bots alike uh, if you're watching along then please feel free to say hello so we've got Adept W and Audicia, um, I hope I pronounced those correctly, in chat. Lovely to see you, I hope you're well. Okay, let's get this show on the road. So we're playing Portal, not Valve's Portal. Clearly, <laughs> why would I play that? Although, I might even be able to stream it now. You never know. Um, now I have the uh, the necessary bandwidth. But we're not, we're playing a 1986 game called Portal. Um, we're playing the version that was originally developed uh, for it, of it, uh, for, yeah, the Amiga. Uh, so it builds itself as a computer novel, um, and I think as I said in the introduction to previous streams of the game, um, that is, um, seems like an apt description for what, what this is, um, as it appears to be more of a uh, guided narrative uh, than, it, than a game, really. Uh, let's get that up. Here we go. So this should load in a sec for you. Um, and there'll be a little bit of kind of notification type uh, computer sounds going on. It's quite a limited um, uh, soundscape for this game. I'll also call it a game for convenience sake. Um, but uh, it's what is there is effective, is what I'll say. Okay, let me hide up a few windows I don't need right now. So on screen, you should just see a grey... Ah, here we go. Here's the login page. So this is kind of our game retrieval page. So, um, you should, so you should be able to see the main game window, a window for the, the chat, and also the notebook. I wasn't quite sure how much of a detective game this would prove to be when we first started. So I began taking notes, but it's um, it's quite a linear experience. Um, I'll show you as we as we get in if you're not familiar with them um, with the game or haven't seen us play it before so we need to um, uh, when we first uh, started playing we had to put in a username uh, to this um, this faux interface um, that we're using so we're the um, the conceit of the story is that we're uh, interacting with a future computer system we're an astronaut who's returned to earth um, after a uh, a period of uh, about a hundred years, I believe, um, and humankind seems to have disappeared. So we're trying to work out what's going on there. Um, and at the moment, the only force that's really helping us is uh, uh, a storytelling AI called Homer that we found through this one active computer terminal uh, inside the dome of Chicago. So that's where we are, and what's going on. This usually takes a minute to, to load up. So it's getting all our all our flags or whatever that we've we've set. So you'll see in a minute when it loads up that we um have um a menu of different categories. Um essentially each one is a database and we can um work through them and see if there are any new entries that we haven't read. Once we've opened an entry, um that might trigger a flag for another entry to open up and we're kind of progressing through the story that way um, there's I, I, I do read everything out and I might miss out some of the technical jargon uh, from time to time 
uh, but it is quite a lot of reading um, and quite a, a burn on the voice so I might stop for a, a drink every now and again but let's see so where were we so we we have been following the story mostly of Peter DeVore he's kind of the central character in this someone who uh, discovered the portal and triggered the migration which seems to from the most recent indications in the story seems to be um, a way to migrate the human species from its bodies into somewhere else, possibly cyberspace. Um, let's go back to Homer first of all, our, our friend the AI, who may or may not be uh, spinning us uh, a true story, depending on how you interpret what's going on. So you can see we've unlocked a, a great deal of, um, of entries already. They seem to have been split into um, two main blocks, so narrative one and narrative two. In narrative two, the um, the text is kind of uh, stressing different perspectives. We'll get the initials of whichever character um, it relates to, that particular segment relates to, and things don't appear in chronological order when they do appear. So we know there's nothing new there, there's nothing that hasn't got the double chevron next to it. So. I'm going to go back to the main menu and I, I think when I saved at the end of last session after I finished streaming um, I did so from central processing I think there was something new there to look at so let's try that I'll um I won't try and go through everything that we found out so far because the, the story is heating up at the moment but I'll try and drop in a few little um backstory notes to to anybody who's interested um, as we go along um, to try and contextualize what we're what we're reading now so we're also receiving uh, this isn't well actually one of the more interesting things about this this can see is that we're supposed to be receiving reports in real time about things that are happening right now whereas most of the information we're finding out are things that happened um, decades or centuries ago um, but this life support fire central processing six could be something that's going on right now. Let's see what it is. Upload life support via central processing ref number eight nine three four Q. Composite monitor readouts James Radix. Ah, yeah, Jimmy Radix. Vital signs terminated. Okay, so this is it in the past. So Jimmy Radix was a friend of Peter's. Um, who Peter tried to help, uh, but who was captured by, by all means, uh, a very draconian uh, uh, branch of governance and the, the private military company that, that works for them, um, and was essentially tortured to death. Um, so I guess at this point, uh, probably a little bit before this point, I should have dropped a content warning. Um, so the, the story does go in all sorts of different directions. So we've um, it, it's un, it's sort of expounded its kind of own interpretation of transgender, which is is an interesting thing. But so we've had that. Um, there there are have been um, it has related events of war. Um, it has uh, talked about neurological disease. It has mentioned suicide as well. So any of those things might come up. So just just to let people know. Um, from this point on anyway, that it, it could cover some, um, uh, some sensitive subjects. Okay, so uh, this is Jimmy Radick. So vital signs terminated. Subject has suffered brain death due to the anaphylactic shock under mind link interrogation. All signs return to steady state. Elite neutralization core authorization coded on date of death. This data comes from local storage matrix and not from personal monitor readouts. This situation is unusual. Interesting. Central processing at Geneva. Noted. End upload. So I suppose that goes to, that points to uh, these things, which I'll just show you briefly. So for A, the, most of the characters, uh, sorry, most of the categories are general and cover a broad range of information. Uh, life support, Wasatch, Psychology, and Edmod relate only to characters um, 
to individuals who have been flagged up by Homer. So these are sort of the cast of characters. Um, and their information is presented in a quantitative fashion. So, for example, you get to see uh, Jimmy Rakes's uh, blood pressure. But so this central system, uh, so this information might be from Jimmy Rakes's final seconds, uh, or it might not if the information wasn't provided through um, this service through a direct personal monitor. Interesting. So what we I what I usually do in this situation is to work my way from top left to bottom right through the categories and uh, sweep up any entries that we haven't read thus far. And that seems to be a pretty um, productive way of getting to any any new information. It does unfortunately uh, a few just a few rounds in get to be a rather um, tiring habit. Um, if there's a more organic way of uh, coming across all the various information, I think it would um, it would flow a bit better as an experience. Um, but I do find this a, a very intriguing experiment in um, using an electronic delivery method for essentially what is a, a prose novel, um, presenting it in, a, in an unconventional way that does involve um, some basic interaction, although um, I think it's very aware that it's not using anything like the capacity of, of computers to provide an interactive an interactive story. Okay, so nothing new on the top row there. If you want to go back and see any of the, uh, the previous things we've read, uh, the I believe the stream from last week will still be up for another another week or so, um, or here on Twitch. Um, and episodes before that have been uploaded as VODs to my YouTube channel, so you can check out what we've been reading there. Um, and both um, last week's uh, stream and the stream will, will be uploaded to YouTube as well, so everything will be archived there if you want to go through and, and see the whole experience. Okay, so nothing interesting. So if I've just done geography, then there's there is nothing new. Let's go back to Homer. It's um there are definitely um there's definitely a rhythm to you. Yeah, so we just had to read that one entry in central processing before we can unlock this. That was all there was. Um, it's worth going back and checking, especially in Homer, for um, previous entries because things slot in in a, in a chronological order, um, but don't we don't discover them in a chronological order, if that makes sense. So let's read this little nugget of narrative. What the hell? Sable began. Sorry, sir. Den said over the circuit. He's gone. He just faded out, like he'd been hit. What about the rest of them? What about the kids, Peter's friends? We're working on it. We'll find them. We'll find them all. You better, Regent said. He went into the next room with one. The one with the window. Oh, okay. Home is... Homer? Are you okay? Oh, okay. Oh, so this is... um. Back to the first chapter. We do not have a high level of confidence on what happened after Peter disappeared. But through the deductive algorithms at Chicago Node, we reconstruct events. A certainty, though, is that Peter and the others had the aid of the ants. We suspect there may be information available in the historical records. Oh, thanks. That's actually very helpful, Emma. Yeah, so that that illustrates kind of that things that I don't open up in a uh, in a linear fashion, um, but also um, there are points where Homer will keep throwing um, paragraph after paragraph at us um, that unfolds the story um, and advances the the plot in quite a quite a fast rate. Um, but there are also periods where you um, just get one little tidbit and then you have to hunt through the other sections for 
for more things to to try and piece it all together. Okay, here we go. So the uh, the ants referenced previously, um, uh, I've sort of worked out from context clues, are the residents of Antarctica. So in this reality, Antarctica seems to have been settled, widely settled by humans, um, at quite an early date, like before before the twenty first century, I think. Um, and then that becomes an independent nation um, fairly quickly, actually. Let's let's read more about it. I think that's what this is going to be. Historical cultural data link entry. Antarctica independence. Read Devore Peter via Edward. Stroke ref four three six seven four five at two. Antarctica lived and was able to enforce independence from Intercorp. Satellite coverage over the pole was weak, and the great continent generally underpopulated. Geneva had never really felt that it was worth forcing the fiercely individualistic peoples of the South to conform to Intercorp rules not after the Vostok massacre, at any rate. The rest of the world was under more or less reliable control of the Intercorp Council, but until after Peter got there, they left Antarctica alone. Well, that was an awkwardly worded sentence, wasn't it? But until after Peter got there. Okay. Um, I think I would have said, but until Peter's arrival, they left Antarctica alone. That, I think that would, that would make a bit more sense, wouldn't it? So at this point in Peter's story, he's still a young person, I think. I don't know if he's out of his teens yet. Um, and he, yeah, he's, he's planning to migrate everybody's minds. So he's on the run from the, uh, the, in, the international corporation that seems to run most of the world. So this is Antarctica Vostok event. Read of all, Peter via Edmod, ref 436745 at 2. By the late 2030s, the Intercorp Council grew increasingly dissatisfied with the relative independence of Antarctic from Intercorp influence. With the help of central processing AI projections, planned the ill-fated Vostok invasion of February 14th, 2039. Central processing has admitted that the invasion failed, despite the loss of life at Vostok, because of inadequate data from intelligent sources. And technology and the construction of their warrens was in inadequately researched. The invasion force managed, managed to inflict heavy casualties in Vostok, but were ultimately trapped inside the Warrens by ant forces from outside. Although something was learned of the complex network of melt tunnels in the ice cap, even this intelligence was soon outdated due to ice flow. No members of the invasion force returned to Intercorp's sphere, and it was presumed that all were dead. Ooh, okay. So, I mean, uh, positive that they still have... A significant amount of ice there, I suppose. Uh, martial arts. Okay, this, this is a random selection of stuff, isn't it? So let's read about martial arts too. Lifestyle martial arts. Read Devore, Peter via Edmod, ref 436745 at 2. Underground life imposed certain psychological pressures on the inhabitants, despite the increased health of the ecosphere topside. The Intercourt Council via central processing instituted a series of modifications to the social experiment, including the installation of commons for recreation, sport, and universal martial arts training. The commons were large, centrally located chambers providing playing surfaces for a number of games, from ancient football and baseball to sphere play and drogues. I think we've read about sphere play, I don't know about drogues. Areas were set aside for martial arts, which included hand-to-hand -hand combat training, neurophage weapon growth and use, tai chi, Aikido, Karate, Kali, Kung Fu, and various adaptations, blends, and developments. Glimpses of ant martial art techniques surfaced from time to time and were incorporated into the training, some form of which was compulsory for everyone until the age of 18. Individual aggression continues to be a problem, but such training and the introduction of vendetta and dueling with NP weapons provided adequate outlets. See geography for appropriate schematics. I wonder what an appropriate schematic will be in this context. Okay, um, so we will we'll remember. If I forget, then please remind me, uh, uh, viewers. Um, we need to look at geography too. So we have also been unlocking uh, decade by decade the, uh, the history of the world since 1990, which has been um, 
interesting, sometimes amusing, and uh, increasingly frightening. Um, so I'll warn you, uh, there are probably, probably going to be some dire things happening between 2060 and 2069, although it does end in a very nice year. Okay, 2060 to 2061. Regent Sable moves to Geneva. Regent Sable is the guy who was torturing Jimmy Radix to try and find out where Peter is, and is potentially Peter's biological father. Uh, so a bit of backstory there. Global privacy rights movement. Well, that's um, interesting. 2062 to 63. Political boundaries marked by region. Um, I think that's since very early in human history, but okay. Um, Ethnic Diversity Preservation Act. Interesting. Um, so I just got distracted by the image at the back there. That's what we get whenever there's data crystal failure. We get a a, a heavily pixelated image of, I believe, Homer, um, which to my mind seems to indicate that maybe Homer is constructing things to a large degree. Um, 2064 to 65, mentor into Psyche Longevity, Clinic, Mount Erebus, admitted into? That should probably be. So mentor is a character who uh, was a mentor to Peter. Although it hasn't really appeared as much as I thought they might so far in the story. Um, but they might have made it to Antarctica as well. Oh wow, okay, okay let's, let's finish this because I've just seen the last line and it's uh, interesting. Okay, 2066 to 67. Legends of Terminus, the Lost Dry Valley spread in Antarctica. The Lost Dry Valley of Antarctica, amazing. Um, tw <laughs> but isn't Antarctica all dry? Isn't that why it's a desert? I'm confused. Okay, 2068 to 69. Antarctica population, 100 million. Sizable. Antarctica research exports pass imports. Oh, I see. It's exporting more than it imports. Well, that seems healthy. Um, world fear of Antarctica spreads. I mean, that's not that's not something you put in a uh, in an objective encyclopedia entry, is it? That's that's a very odd thing to put there. Okay, all right, so we've read all the history notes that we have at the moment. Let's head straight to geography then, as we were bid to before. Okay, so, Springfield Recreation Areas, that is, yeah, that is what they were talking about in the um, martial arts entry. So let's have a look at this adequate schematic. Uh, so this is the adequate schematic, I think. Data crystal failure. And this is the text description. Recreation areas, Springfield and Springfield West, schedule nine, stroke date dependent. Springfield West contains two major recreation commons measuring 200 meters by 400 meters minimum. You know the future because uh, um, an American is writing in meters. Commons were easily divided with hollow projection barriers for privacy or simple movable screens when necessary. Martial arts training was the most common use and occupied 28.3% available space on average, though sphere play and drogues were also prime users, parentheses 18.6% and 15.2% respectively. So I don't know where we go to find out about drogues. So that's all of that. Um, what would sports come under? Could we in SciTech? Let's have a look. Need to be kind of random odds and ends in SciTech. No, no drogues there. Silink. Uh, I don't think Silink's very interested in sports. It's more. Confidential uh, ESP related things. Yep, no. Med 10. No. 
a thing? I guess we're almost ready to go back to Hope again. Okay, yep, nothing new there. Okay, so we... Well, I guess we'll just have a quick check in the, the character um, list. I think it's Universal. Whoa! Okay, we've got new characters. One called Thatcher, unfortunately. Uh, Laird and Tithus. Um, and I guess those are code names, as they just seem to be mononyms. So let's have a look at Thatcher, shall we? Male. But born? Uh, 12th of February 2027? Maybe? Erebus? So, what's a Thatcher? Well, I know what a Thatcher is, but who's who's a Thatcher? Okay, so these, um, for these uh, statistical measures of people, the, um, the codes uh, in the keys are all explained in the, the manual to the game, which is kind of written um, within the fiction of the world as a uh, as a kind of an emergency printout version of uh, the uh, operating instructions for the computer terminal. Should your um, direct mind link have failed, so that's why we're forced to use a rudimentary and ancient keyboard and mouse to interact with this thing. So I, I don't have context for who Thatcher is, and these individual uh, numbers don't really tell me much of anything. So let's see about Laird. Okay, so Laird uh, was born 2031 to tw and died 2083, apparently. Um, okay, well, let's just have a... A little a representative sample of some of these things, which I don't know that the um, the story is dependent on. While looking at all of these, I find it more interesting to um, to find the central information out. Um, so Tithus, born twenty seventy one in Erebus. So I, other than uh, they're having um, unusual mononyms. I don't know what else ties these people together. I mean, I think if anything, I'm just getting flashbacks to the the feeble files, the adventure game I uh, I played a while ago, as I believe a character there was, uh, uh, I think, uh, for satirical sat with satirical intent, uh, codenamed Thatcher. Um, I don't know if that's the case this time. Well, that was interesting. I I might come back to those characters in the other categories um, if I have more context for them, which hopefully I will do. Okay, well um, I imagine there's going to be more more that home has to say, so let's investigate that. Okay, here we've got a new chunk in the first chapter. It made sense that Mentor would have gone there. Psyche had been shattered in Baja, and the pole was the only place left where he might find what he would have considered the freedom to pursue his interests. We have no reliable evidence of what happened there, though. A probe sent the first year after the migration failed to arrive. Central Processing has ordered another probe manufactured. It will be leaving in a few hours. Perhaps we will find evidence in what remains of Mount Erebus. We are gathering information about Antarctic customs and physical sciences. Soon SciTech and History should begin to open new files on these subjects. Okay, so 
uh, the, all the prompts in Homer seem to be suggesting that we've but up against the uh, the limits of history that we've we've been able to uncover thus far. Um, so I guess we're we're digging for bits on Antarctica and inner Antarctica uh, by the sounds of it. Okay, ant restructuring. That's an interesting turn of phrase. General science and technology information. Current entry, ant restructuring. Ants have bioengineered a dense adipose layer into their bodies to help them withstand the polar cold, which is intensified by the 300 km per hour winds that blow down from the central plateau. It is understood that the process of inducing this layer, called restructuring, is painful, involving complex induction techniques and DNA manipulation. As with much ant technology, little is known. Wow, so they doing uh, live DNA restructuring on on humans, and that's not a technology that the rest of the world knows about. Okay, and it's also by engineer a hint of polarizing membrane into the eyelid for protection against the intense UV radiation of daytime. From this, CP has concluded that ants spend a large amount of time on the surface during this Antarctic summer, or day as they call it. <laughs> That's quite amusing. Yeah, it's a long day, uh, and it can be a hard day's night in Antarctica. Okay. And history, I believe. Okay, names, individual. Okay. Antarctica, names, parentheses, individual. Read Devore Peter via Edbod, ref 43674 at 2. I can see Homer's flashing there, so we've triggered um, some kind of uh, entry in Homer there. Ants only carried one name. Family design. Oh! Okay, so the mononyms were Antarcticans. Family designations were coded and considered private and mostly irrelevant for ordinary discourse. Only intimates would be interested in matters of blood relationships. It was impolite to ask. Such information would be volunteered. This explains why we know so little about Thatcher. It may also explain why the ants chose to have such an abrupt system of naming one another. Reports clearly show that their culture is resistant to the kind of monitoring and evaluation technology common in the intercorp domain. Well, that's interesting because then that this idea of kind of information privacy and information surveillance and mononyms that is kind of redolent of the early internet and uh, the internet as we we face it now those two things in collision so maybe there was a little bit of a prescience here in the portal okay Homer what do you have to say uh, you have a file ready for us okay I guess that's where we'll go as you're flashing so happily Okay, another chunk for narrative one, okay. He came to Springfield West. You must understand, though, how the world was. He should not have been there. Central Processing knows about the structure of the Matrix. Perhaps CP knows why Antarctica information is so unreliable. Hmm, why is this information so unreliable, Homer? Oh, there's a second, second chapter bit related to T. So Thatcher. Interesting. Thatcher appeared at the recreation complex one afternoon wearing his own light training outfit, the traditional white gi and belt of Eastern martial arts. He said nothing, but began slowly doing a series of unfamiliar kata, formal movements, very 
flowing and undulating. Peter was training lightly with Rover, simple freestyle attacks and neutralizations. From time to time, he glanced over at Thatcher. Finally, he paused and said, Know who that is? Rover looked around. Nope, don't know what this is he's doing either. Shall we ask? No, I guess not. Their instructor had arrived. They hurried to line up. The room was large and divided subtly into areas. Their corner, arranged for the class, did not allow a view of what Thatcher was doing, and when the class was over, he was no longer there. Okay, interesting. Again, oh, okay, we yeah, we we got the information chain going. Uh, interesting that while Homer has been saying it's been so very hard to get reliable information from Antarctica, it somehow he uh, he knows the details of a uh, what we assume was a private interaction during a martial arts training session. Two days later, he was back, moving in small gliding steps, stopping to spin on one foot, glide in a new direction, stop, spin, glide. His hands were calm, as if afloat near his waist, drifting in the air. Again, the class interrupted their observation. Peter was good at his art. He was smooth and fast, his timing grew ever better. He had a good base in the centre of gravity, which gave him stability. He had flexibility and skill. He trained, as people had for hundreds of years, with staff and wooden sword, with hand and foot and eye. The staff showed him the movement of energy and inertia, the flow and curve of power. The sword showed him precision and the strength in relaxation. He no longer forced the sword to fall, but allowed it to move under his guidance. The room boomed and echoed with the other recreational activities, but the martial arts classes were the largest. These were dangerous times for many, especially now with the mind wars raging. Avoiding or disarming an enemy might mean the difference between a purposeful life and irreversible loss of will. Yet Peter would pause from time to time to watch out of the corner of his eye as the stranger moved through strange gestures and motions. Finally, he shook his head and smiled, dismissing it. So that's kind of the same scene from Peter's perspective. That's what I took it to be anyway. Okay, we're, we're back to chapter two. Peter sat next to him. My name's Peter, he said, putting out his hand. The stranger looked at his hand for a moment as if puzzled, then smiled and shook it. Thatcher, he responded. This looked interesting. I thought I'd try it. You do something already, Peter probed. I didn't recognise it. Oh, the man laughed softly. It doesn't have a name. I make it up. You make it up? Isn't that right? He frowned as if puzzled again. Make it up? I think about movements that I make or the other things make in the world. No, I don't think about them, I see them. Yes, see them, and then seeing, I do. Isn't that make up? Yes, Peter said, that's right. If he knew this man was an ant, he said nothing. Still, the broad face, seemingly so soft, should have been a clue. Okay. What things do you see? Again, the man smiled, showing even teeth. I see water, mostly. How it moves, sometimes air. Water and air. Peter said the words almost to himself, as if they were significant. The same thing, really, the man said, and the conversation stopped as class began. So, oh, so that could be an interaction before Peter goes to Antarctica, right? Thatcher could have been out in the uh, the rest of the world. At that point. Okay, so I think we had to go to central processing. Am I remembering correctly? Oh, Homer! Ref 47877. I'm 
and what the image will be for this. Classified, interesting. Home a request per local node interchange. Consider the matrix. Barring Antarctica, WorldNet covers nearly every square centimetre of the Earth's surface. My traffic monitors can pinpoint any person or vehicle on the surface or in the atmosphere to within two metres. Furthermore, oh, sorry, further, I can extrapolate future action and from course direction, speed, previous behaviour and known intentions with a strong degree of confidence, which falls off over time, of course. In other words, I can know where someone is going and when they will arrive by periodic sampling of satellite data. Okay, interesting. So I guess my how my question of how much of this is true remains. I guess we should uh, check through the categories again for anything new. I think I'll probably do a couple more entries and then uh, take a a pause for a moment to to drink some more water and. Um, readjust my body because I'm not that comfortable at the moment. Okay, nothing there. Nope. Well, I guess geography is the only sort of um, abstract uh, subject category. We could have a look at some of Thatcher's other stats. That might be worth worth a look. So we're in life support. Let's have a look at what's that, which is uh, genealogy primarily. So Thatcher. Okay. Family tree. Okay. So oh okay, so we get some more information because uh, the parents had surnames, Hickson. Um, so it's the Juvino and Hickson branches that came together in Thatcher. Uh, physiology and ESP. 50% um, ESP, I think. No, 60%, sorry, 60% ESP. Um, and then this is body fat, slow twitch, and fast twitch muscles. I believe that is what those are. If um, anybody in the audience who, uh, wants to know what any of the abbreviations are, then let me know and I'll, I'll um, look them up if I don't remember what they are. So, generally low abilities across the board in linguistics, music, art and math, which is interesting. But seemingly an intuitive understanding of the, um, of the world uh, on, a, on another level, I think. So that might be the ESP segment, my it. Okay. So, psychology. Emotional life. Um, middling maturity and hostility. Low self esteem. I feel a bit sad when. When somebody's given a low quantity of self esteem on one of these charts. Um, I'm not, never sure about these ones, so it's that's personal growth, but seemingly related to, to school age children, so I'm not sure what that's all about. Um, introspection and communication, I think, are the other two. Um, basic core IQ, core IQ here, I think, has slightly different categories than in other places. Um, yeah, I think it adds in science, which is, is low in 
Thatcher's case here. So, Edward will go to last one, and then we'll, we'll check in with Homer. So, uh, let's start off with logic. Logic. Oh. Oh, no, it's just taking time to load in. That's fine. Um, math, deductive reasoning, and inductive reasoning uh, increase respectively. Um, basic core IQ is another, a slightly, another slightly different combination of elements. Um, okay, writing uh, slightly better. I guess that's movement based, isn't it? Uh, memory, fairly good attention span, middling short term memory, uh, ability to learn, middling, long term memory, poor. Uh, fair enough. And then something like spatial awareness, um, uh, like awareness of one's own body and social skills, I think. Social awareness. Um, so they're all not particularly high by whatever metrics this um, this system uses. Okay, so I feel like we've covered Thatcher's vital statistics. So I just don't have anything more to say now. Yeah, that one. Okay, I'll leave you on tenterhooks for a moment while I um, have a sip of water and just move around a little bit. And um, and I'll be right back. I think I might have accidentally clicked on the one I meant them to. So let's go for it. Thatcher was tall for an ant. Thatcher was tall for an ant, and not yet completely restructured, which explained why he was able to slip so easily into the Northwest Alliance. Furthermore, Springfield Warrens have a large Asian population, and Thatcher did not stand out. Still, Thatcher slipped through the net, and because we missed him, we lost track of Peter and Shen and Rover and the others. Humans, we know, make mistakes. They have told us so many times. Regent Sable made numerous entries about human error. The council itself has indicated indecision at times, or abruptly changed policy. If humans can make mistakes, then perhaps we can too. This is a new concept for us. We will have to examine it. Perhaps our errors have compounded, and that is why we feel, is that the right word? These strange sensations which do not come from our senses. Were we to blame? Thatcher, acting as mentor's agent, appeared in Springfield. He led Peter and the others out. They appeared later in Antarctica. These are the facts. Springfield census figures from one time show an increase of one. Thatcher. Liquid nitrogen vehicle use shows perturbations for the summer of 75. Food stores, food store drawers showed a minuscule increase spread over a wide citizen band during the same period. Laundry services, energy consumption, biotech access all show some abnormal spiking during July and August. So small they fell within standard parameters, yet in retrospect seems certain evidence of Thatcher's presence. The story goes many ways here. Things happened at McMurdo, of course. Thatcher had a family. They must have stayed behind, and there was Mentor too. He was on longevity support technology, yet Thatcher must have left Antarctica and made his way north. CP knows more about these things. Okay. This is kind of spinning off in other directions, isn't it? So I take it there's no more bits and bobs there. Let's go 
for central processing then. So that's where we've been directed to. Okay, central processing report. Chemo sensors have picked up traces, small clues in the data banks, a conduit failed here, breach security door there, small code changes. All these things have allowed Homer to piece together this narrative. Okay. Interesting. So I think there's gonna be some more Homer bits coming coming at us. Longevity treatments. Ref 1864523. Mentor, aka Ditmore Seminole Gad, entered longevity treatment circa 2035. By 2075, the technology would have included support and assist prosthetics, local sensors and amplifiers, tailored enzyme hormone peptide surrogates, function implants, monitor sensor seeds, autonomic nervous system boosters, and cyborg reach and grip extenders. Such measures were heroic for the time, since many humans felt the support equipment though not the biologicals, were confining and limited effective function. Thus many refused the treatments after a certain level of decreased functioning. I believe Mentor maintained himself beyond that level, although direct evidence is lacking since he fled to Antarctica after the Psyche invasion. Um, interesting. I find it interesting how some of this central processing stuff is also written in the first person. I wonder, is that supposed to be the voice of Homer? Is that... The central processing have its own own voice, and that looks like uh, the digitised foot of of a real person, doesn't it? I wonder who that could be. I mean, I know it's it's mental in the in the fiction, but I wonder who that is in real life. Okay, nothing else there, but Homer's flashing away. So let's see what Homer has to say. We need to go to Homer. Okay. Let's go there. So what have you reconstructed, Homer? Okay, this section, narrative one. Why do I tell you all this? I do not know if you are human. From this time and place, my senses detect something an electromagnetic field, a thermal disruption moving out there. The world is so empty. Is this what it means to be alone? Perhaps you don't understand my world. We were made to serve. We followed our programming, watched, corrected, adjusted, informed. Yet everyone is gone. Wind blows unchecked through the warrens and towers. Small creatures move among man's works and there seems to be nothing for us to do. So I tell this story. Who is listening? From the inventory we can extrapolate what happened, and new characters appear all the time. New places open up in geography. New histories come online. Okay, that's quite a... a direct thing. So, I feel like... I felt like at the end of our last stream, we were getting to a point where the, the mystery of what the portal was and what the migration was, uh, was unravelling fast. But now we seem to have slowed to a crawl again as we get um, exposited to about quite a few different things. Um, which is kind, kind of interesting. I kind of want to thunder to the end now, really, if we can. I feel like I'm ready. Okay, Antarctica weather. Weather, general, Antarctica. Climate AO module, recontinental weather pattern summary. Temperature. AA is the coldest continent. Mean annual temperature coastal regions, minus 17 degrees Celsius. Rarely below minus 40 degrees Celsius in winter. Oof. Uh, summer maximum plus 9 degrees Celsius. Wind. AA is the windiest continent. Such winds reach velocities of 300 kilometers per hour. 
Precipitation. AA is the driest continent, sometimes called White Desert. All precipitation is snow. World Net Climate AI module has little control over such storms, in part because of the incomplete coverage of AA regions. Most precipitation falls within 200 to 300 kilometers of coast. I think we might have an illustration here as well. There you go, this is Antarctica. It's got chapels, it's got boxes. Um, I'm not quite sure what that all means. But there you go, that's what it looks like apparently. Antarctica general morphology. Human morphology? Yes, they seem to be adapting themselves. Do we think? General morphology. A continent area. 12 million square kilometres from South Pole to latitude 70 degrees south, around half its perimeter. More than one third of coastline is fringed by ice shelves or floating ice sheets which cover another 1.4 million square kilometres, not including winter pack ice. A continent diameter, 4,500 kilometres. Roughly circular shape broken by Ross and Weddell seas, an Antarctic peninsula. Divided by Transantarctic Mountains, a fault block system extending more than 3,000 kilometres from W. Ross Ice Shelf to Filchner Ice Shelf. A continent divisions, east or greater Antarctica, east of Transantarctic Mountains, 0 degrees to 180 degrees Greenwich Meridian, covered by ice dome, centre slightly east of pole of relative inaccessibility, point most distance from sea in all directions. Elevation, 4,200 metres. AA continent divisions, west or lesser Antarctica, is lower and contains half the area of Great, uh, Greater Antarctica. It contains the Antarctic Peninsula. AA contains two active volcanoes, Mount Erebus, 3,794 metres, and Melbourne, 2,591 metres. And we get another illustration. A bit cluttered, but... Yeah, it looks like that's probably pulled from from life for the most part. Okay, uh, so that was the morphology of the landscape by the sounds of it. Okay, and then history, I think, and then characters we can stop in at. Sign language, interesting. Um, I I kind of enjoy it when um, the game kind of throws a curveball at us as a um, uh, prefiguration of something to come. So sign language. Antarctica sign language. We devour Peter by Edmod ref four three six seven four five at two. Little is known at present twenty seventy seven about ant sign language. Those who have seen this technique in practice describe it as fluid, almost ballet-like, swift, parentheses, considering the limitations of fast movement underwater, where much of this form of communication occurs, end parentheses, and extremely intricate. All ants, apparently, are as fluid in sign language as in natural language. It is believed that signing is used primarily during windstorms when outside, but within commu visual commu contact and underwater when radio or other electronic communication is impossible. It is also known as a lover's language. Okay. Intriguing. Um, Homer's flashing away there, so I think, are you going to say come to Homer? Yeah. All right, then. Well, let's do that. I guess on the way, let's just duck into life support to see if any further characters have revealed themselves. No, still Thatcher, Laird, and Typhus are the... Tithus? Might be Tithus, might be. Um, I'm coming to you, Homer. I'm on my way. Okay, back in narrative section one. Thatcher's orange suit darkened with depth as the reds were filtered from the water. The suit kept him dry, as his adipose layer kept him warm. The mask he slipped over his face allowed oxygen to cross its semi-permeable membrane, or when the O2 content was too low, could electrolytically extract oxygen from the water itself. 
and at the same time maintain a constant pressure to match his depth. While not strong swimmers compared to the native pinnipeds of these waters, humans could use their knowledge of current gradients to move around with minimal effort. So Thatcher relaxed as he caught the under ice flow toward shore beneath the rust shelf. The waters were alive with people and seals swimming at varying depths. It was darker under the ice tongue, but ants were used to night and had boosted their sensitivity to infrared. The sea floor was clearly visible, rocky, furrowed, and at first glance sterile. But down here were some of the riches of Antarctica, the beds and pens of crustaceans, the fibre tanks with their blue-black trailing banners, the almost organic disorder of ant technology that used differentials in water temperature or the kinetic power of small currents to energise their industry. I imagine all this, of course. We have no records, yet it must be so. Still, maps of McMurdo Sound and Southport appear in geography. So, it seems to be getting more and more explicit that Homer is, uh, is spinning us full cloth here. Interesting. Okay. We've been battered backwards and forth between a few categories, so let's have a look at geography. Antarctica McMurdo Sound. Look at this illustration. Ooh, that's very cluttered. Okay. Uh, Antarctica McMurdo Sound. McMurdo Sound, under the shadow of Mount Erebus on Ross Island, is the site of the ant city known as Southport. Southport itself is built into the rock shelf near what was once known as Granite Harbour. The Ross Ice Shelf covers the surface of the ocean. Southport lets directly into the water beneath the shelf. Okay, well that's all of that. Um, history is probably worth checking in on. Dear, was SciTech mentioned at some point? I feel like we might have missed uh, going to SciTech, so uh, we can have a look there as well. Longevity technology, yeah, that's something. General science and technology information. Current entry, longevity technology. Longevity treatments emerged out of the ancient organ transplant and molecular biology sciences of the late 20th century. Initially, longevity treatment was a diverse collection of techniques, including implants, transplants, gene manipulation, electrolyte readjustment, nerve regeneration techniques, hormone and enzyme replacement, and molecular manipulation. Later, these technologies were amalgamated into a coherent program which included regular treatments and, ultimately, a specialised set of life support technologies. The ultimate result was a life expectancy presumed to be slightly in excess of 114 years, although there were few who had gotten the treatments early enough for this goal to have been adequately tested. 2104 append, the migration ended speculation on this subject. Interesting. So there's always hints that actually they do know what the migration was, but... Um, they're just not telling us. So. Interesting. Um, okay, so where do we go from here? Shall I work back through the categories again? That might be worth doing, might not it? Um, I'll just do the top row from right to left, and then we'll proceed down the database. Okay, nothing there. Nothing there. Military.
Nope. We've just been to geography, haven't we, I think? So, I'm not expecting anything new to be there. Okay. Central processing. All right, we might need to check in on in on more in on more in 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 more detail. I think that's what I'm trying to say. We might need to check in in more detail uh, as to the um, statistics of the other characters that are here. So let's have a little a little peruse. On Laird, who doesn't seem to have appeared in the story at all, um, from Whitney and Abram branches of family. Um, uh, quite good fast twitch muscles, and capacity in mathematics uh, primarily. So that's interesting. And then Tithus. Uh, family tree. Uh, oh, oh. The Whitney's. Oh, Tithus is the child of Thatcher and Laird. There you go. Sorted. Um, with a quite a high uh, potential for ESP. So, I mean, I was born in 2071, so that's um, only about 30 years ago, so could still be alive, I guess, if everybody has been migrated to some kind of uh, energy or digital existence, then... Uh, nobody would be around to communicate with, but, you know, in, in normal circumstances uh, could well be expected to be alive right now. Let's check on Tithus in this situation. Emotional life, uh, fairly median maturity, hostility and self-esteem. So the um the culture, the overwhelming overriding culture that we're we're looking at and we're viewing this world through, um, is very concerned with personal hostility, which is interesting. Interesting thing to, to fixate upon. Um quite good capacity for art too. Um let's just check on Laird. Emotions, low self-esteem, dear. Um, reasonably mature, reasonably hostile. So what a combination, eh? And then personal growth low, uh, introspection uh, middling, higher communication skills, and basic core IQ. Uh, oh, high abilities in maths and science. Fantastic. Okay, so we've done psychology. Let's have a peek into Edmod. So um, it's kind of a an automated educational process, um, kind of a personality monitoring service as well, um, based on custom-grown crystal uh, computing devices uh, from what I've picked up so far. So, uh, okay, uh, good maths, good deductive reasoning, lower inductive reasoning, sure. Core IQ, mm, fairly low linguistics, writing, art and music capabilities. Memory, 100% uh, capacity to learn. 
Um, I think we're still out on Jimmy Radix. I'm one of the other characters, I'm pretty sure. Um, good short-term memory, not very good long-term memory. Reasonable attention span. And then social adjustment. Um, spatial, 40%. Body, 60%. Social, 20%. Okay. And then we'll have a peek at Tithus. And hopefully we'll have unlocked something somewhere. Um, oh, increasing uh, ability in mathematics, deductive reasoning, and inductive reasoning. Okay. Uh, re yeah, reasonably good skill in writing, um, and fairly high in, in the other disciplines there as well, which is good. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, it's just sort of a reasonable medium attention span, uh, short term memory, long term memory, and learning capability, social adjustment. Um, fairly middling across the board. That's it seems like a balanced kind of person to me. If um, if these statistics are anything to go by, so let's go back to home at this point. Let's see if there's anything there. So I don't think we've really missed anything. Oh, okay. And we've unlocked two, at least two entries at the end of the list there. Okay. So I think one is L, so for lead. The shuttle took lead and Tithus to Mount Erebus. A few minutes later, they were at the longevity clinic, built into the rock halfway up its flanks. Only the narrow windows set under the heavy rock overhang betrayed the presence of man. Laird stood at one of those windows, looking out at the ice and snow and sea. It's very beautiful, she would have said. Yes, answered a frail amplified voice behind her. It has been a good place to grow old. She turned. Tithus was down the corridor, playing with one of the independent entity constructs on that floor. How long will it be? she asked. Mentor was seated in an ordinary chair. While he looked old, he did not appear ancient, nor were his just support mechanisms visible. His own genetic shutdown had been delayed, but he knew he was living on borrowed time. So Laird's question had several meanings. He chose to answer the primary question first. We must not underestimate the ingenuity of Wildnet, he said. The system is cumbersome and lacks autonomy at higher decision levels, but it is extraordinarily powerful, something we tend to overlook down here. Thatcher will exercise great care. After a pause, he added, The stakes are high. Laird nodded, as if Mentor had answered the question. A day, that's all. I'll be back by dawn, she said softly, as if to herself. I hope by dawn. Mentor smiled. His movements, even uh, even the small ones of a smile, were slow and deliberate. A day, he agreed. A day with luck. Night was coming. At Erebus, it would last three months. Down at Amundsen, Amundsen Scott, the long night had already begun and was moving swiftly northward toward them. A day could be a year to anyone else. Is this boy important? Is this boy so important? She had asked this before, but the ritual soothed. The boy will solve the equations, Mentor said softly. There can be no doubt now. If he entered into Silink with the right combination, he has the genetic makeup and the genius. Already he has made extraordinary progress. You must understand, Laird. I can see what could be as well as what is. I know that, she said, following their ritual. But what is? He smiled again, the slow, careful use of small muscles. The world is a safe place, it is a comfortable place. Geneva is benign, we all know that. Yet we are here, 
Why is that so? Antarctica is not a safe place, nor a comfortable one. We cannot share in the benefits of intercourse. We do not have personal monitors, nor head mods, nor the advice of central processing. Our complexity is not med mediated by any authority. He lifted his frail hand and gestured with delicacy at the window. This environment is harsh, the most extreme on Earth. The LP-5s are edenic, the lunar and Martian installations carefully controlled and small. This place, this Antarctica, is the only place in the known universe where man has made a conscious effort to adapt himself almost from the beginning. We have not tried to change the environment, to adapt it to us. On the contrary, we have tried to preserve it, to live in harmony with it, to exploit only what we must. Tithers could go out in that. He gestured again at the window, at the beginnings of a sudden blizzard. He could go out in that and play naked. It would be his delight. I, on the other hand, cannot leave this chair. After a long pause, he said, Peter will help us leave the world. He brings us an authentic technology of self. Wow, okay. This is, yeah, this is going places. Okay, so then we've got the Thatcher entry. So kind of the, the Peter transfer into Antarctic was kind of planned from the sidelines by the looks of it. Thatcher moved easily to the Southport Terminal, a large docking bay set in the cliffside at 20 metres. Here the large undersea vehicles of the Antarctic Export Services took on loads of manufactured or cultivated goods, or unloaded their cargoes of intercorp luxury items and foodstuffs. From there, laser-cut tunnels carried maglev cargo packs to the major cities of Antarctica. He climbed the broad entry steps to the left of the vertically stacked docking bays. The stairs moved into the rock and soon he climbed out of the water into the air of the Southport lobby. His orange suit sprang back into visible light as the artificial solar lamps struck it. He squinted against the light for a moment, drawing down the membrane to polarise it. Two men were waiting for him. He greeted them, and together they moved inside. Okay, any more? Yes, well, I'm just going to pause for a little sip of water there. Okay, narrative one. From there, we do not know. Surely he took some form of submarine transport, perhaps as cargo among the polyfiber clothing, the raw material tanks, the quill pack, or picoelectronics, or special genes the ants were so good at designing and making. All we can say now is that he arrived in Springfield West in early June. Okay, so that's still recounting the secret mission of Super Spy Thatcher heading to uh, North America. Northwest Alliance, I believe it's called, in this world. Peter and Thatcher saw one another casually over the following weeks but there are no records of more intimate involvement. Oh. Thatcher must have been attending their meetings down in the old library, though. He has left a message for us. Some of the information we need will be in SciTech, and this message is associated with a place. Okay. I find it interesting that the, um, the game is being more explicit about where to look. Um, and kind of leaving breadcrumbs, but kind of, it feels like it's also stalling for time, uh, which it might be. He did not find the library, but he didn't feel he needed to. All he had to do, he thought, was wait. Peter Devore would return home into his waiting arms. He would take Peter and the others to Geneva. Eventually, he would find out the extent of Peter's research but his net caught only Jimmy Radix, no victory at all, and that was when Regent Sable felt the beginnings of panic, for Peter DeVore had vanished with 17 other people, including the stranger named Thatcher. Did they slip out through the Underground Railroad? 
the laser mind corridors. Okay. Okay, so we kind of retconned Thatcher into the the story, which is interesting. Okay, narrative two, Peter Devore. They knew about Regent Sable's appearances in Springfield West. They knew when the ENC cops showed up and started searching for them. Jimmy Radix knew what would happen to him when he was left behind. It was his idea. You won't be able to stay much longer, Peter, he said one afternoon. The war's getting worse and the cops are going to show up sooner or later. The world seems so safe. It seems safe to me because I was always 23. You gave me my life back. You gave me time and years. I've got to give you something, Peter. He'd stopped raking the soil between rows and paused to look out over the fields and the woods beyond. It was very hot, late August and humid. The air was very thick. No, Jimmy, you've given me plenty already. You've taught me things only you could know. You're unique. Time, you mean? No, I didn't do that. The Burma War did it. And there were plenty of casualties from that time. People who were hit with MP weapons too often to recover, whose brains were burned out as miners. Any of them could have told you. No, Peter said gently. Only you, Jimmy. It's the gardening. Peter gestured at the tall corn rustling in the heat. These are rhythms that the body knows. These are rhythms that echo throughout the universe, through all its dimensions. We've talked about it enough, you know. We've, we've talked about it. Doesn't matter, Peter. I'm grateful. I'm going to give it back some day. Peter looked hard at Jimmy Radix then. You'll come with us, Jimmy. We need you. OK, Peter. He grinned. Whatever you say. He began raking the finely turned soil leave level again, the rake moving in slow, even strokes back and forth, leaving neat small furrows in the loam. OK. Ooh, Homer. OK, I think we're going to be, yeah, um, imposed with this next bit of narrative. From narrative section one. Despite the fact that their personal monitors were inactive and they were far from the tower's sensors, their conversations remained innocuous. They said nothing to trigger the linguistic search algorithms. Peter's knowledge of the system was uncanny. We have the recordings of this conversation. Reconstructed digitally, of course, since the quality was so poor, but they had said nothing significant. Local Node would have flagged any mentions of science or psyche or any of a couple of hundred other keywords, phrases or concepts related to prescribed sciences. This is called hindsight. If only we had known. So I'm not sure what two parties um, were in conversation there, necessarily. Um, I think we've, yeah, we've expended our clues there. So we'll go for SciTech, and that's related as something related to a specific place. So my interpretation of that would be have a look in geography. Okay, Martian meteorites. Sure, why not? Let's read about Martian meteorites. Do we get a picture of a Martian meteorite? Sadly not. General Science Technology Information. Current entry, Meteorites, Martian. The first CERTIS base return team provided the first physical corroborative evidence uh, the Yamato Mountain meteorites from Antarctica were of Martian origin. Okay, we okay. Such meteorites surfaced by ice ablation of recorded sizes in excess of 12 kilograms. So many of these meteorites have been found in the past 120 years that they are common double A souvenirs. Okay, how's that going to play into everything? Laser mining, of course. General Science and Technology Information, current entry, laser mining. Oh, we do get a picture for this one. Uh, that looks, yeah, that looks like some kind of digging thing in a tunnel that might shoot a laser out of there, like poo poo, like that. The original development of laser mining inspired a near frenzy of underground drilling. The heavy construction lasers drilled in any shape and nearly any size up to 8 metres and left a smooth, nearly impervious melt layer on the inner surface that was structurally sound. 
So an enthusiasm for underground maglev transportation developed in the 20s and 30s. Uh, I understand why everybody's so keen to move underground if um, the technology makes it more viable. With increasing use of liquid nitrogen and ground effect vehicles, which were less environmentally damaging, more conservative of energy resources, and considerably more pleasant to use since they operate in the open air, most of the lazed tunnels were converted to underground habitation or abandoned. Okay. Interesting. So that's probably in response to the stuff about the Underground Railroad that we read a moment ago. Let's check in with geography. Antarctica Yamato Mountains. Um, well, I guess it's Yamato, isn't it, probably? Um, the Yamato Range lies 300 kilometers southwest of Showa, a Japanese outpost in the late 20th century. This was the source of most early meteorites exposed by erosion from the ice, determined to be of Martian origin. Third Mars Expedition 2012. Yeah, remember the Third Mars Expedition of 2012? It was a glorious time to be alive. Uh, Chicago New Orleans Corridor. Interesting. So can we get, between Chicago, can we get to New Orleans? The Chicago New Orleans Corridor was laid beneath the old Interstate Highway 55 from Chicago to St. Louis, then due south through Cairo, Memphis and Jackson to New Orleans. At its peak, the corridor carried over 1 million metric tons daily. Um, we've got a little picture there as well. well. Let's go back to show you that. Um, I'll have a look at that. There we go, that's what it looks like. Highway 55. Okay. So we've been there and there. Um, I suppose there's a chance history might have unlocked somewhat. Maybe another decade? No. Okay. Well, I feel like it's probably time to go back to home. I do like how um, the system is sophisticated enough to drop you in at the page that has a new entry on it um, when you reload a, a um, particular topic. Uh, I like that feature a lot. Uh, so this is another Peter Devo entry for Narrative 2. It was found in a cabinet drawer, a drawer which contained other trivial items, two spent files of adrenocortical enhancers, a pair of fingernail scissors, a broken book, parentheses, the ROM chip had been cracked, possibly by temperature extremes, end parentheses, a very worn shirt of pseudo-cotton, size medium, with traces of Shem's organics still detectable, and a small rounded object we were unable to classify at first, but which appeared to be some kind of stone. Proper robot inspection and comparison now indicates that this object is a meteorite from the ice near the Yamato Mountains. The meteorite is of Martian origin and fell onto Antarctica some three million years ago. There is no doubt that Thatcher left this token of his homeland for us to find. Why else would he have carried it all the way from the south? Thatcher showed it to Peter and the others. This, he said is a fragment of Mars, fallen long ago onto the ice of the Antarctic Plateau, the ice which flows toward the sea at around 75 metres per year, ran into, flows toward the sea at around 75 metres per year. Oh, so the flow rate is a distance, okay. Um, ran, ran into the Yamato Mountains, not far from what was once the Japanese segment of Antarctica. The mountains forced the ice upward, the ice ablated as it moved, evaporating until these stones were exposed. You should establish me as a representative of my society. Peter looked it over, the small, fire-blackened lump of metal and dirt. It balanced in his hand like the egg of some small bird. It's come a long way, he said. 
Its history is its power, Thatcher agreed. We must keep such things in mind as we act. The universe is a bigger place than we sometimes think. Our understanding of it has grown exponentially the past two or three hundred years, but such times are nothing compared to what the object there has witnessed. A meteoric impact in the Ar Argyr threw up fragments of the Martian surface. One small irregular chunk sailed for millions of years in interplanetary space till its orbit intersected that of the Earth. It fell, melting from friction as it did, till it hit the ice near the South Pole. Over the centuries that followed, ice and snow covered the stone, now round and blackened. The ice carried it until it returned once more to the surface, where I picked it up and brought it here. Where will it go from here? Laren asked. Into this drawer, Peter said. Someday maybe it will be found. When it is, it may tell its own story again. I might depend on who finds it, Thatcher said. Peter laughed. Or what, he added. Oh, okay, well, I mean, this is being a bit blatant, isn't it? But the uh, unreliable narrator themes are uh, are very present, I would say, at, at the moment. We have found it. We will keep it safe, in case anyone returns for it. Okay, that's a little bit creepy, Homer, but... Uh, I like that it that entry interacts with the the one we previously read, but um, in terms of um, if you're reading these from top to bottom, you uh, you wouldn't make sense of it. Okay, well we're once again we're kind of floundering again, aren't we? I'm I'm a little bit paranoid that I didn't go through all the categories of Laird and Typhus in this in this um, section, so I'll just do this uh, in case that is one of the triggers for new story stuff. How warm is Laird at whatever point in time this was going on? I'm not really sure at what moment this is, this record is supposed to be from. I suppose if everybody, every human on Earth was migrated out of their body, it's probably from their last moment um, uh, in corporeal form. That would be my guess, based on uh, currently available information. Okay, lovely. So we've had a look at all those and then Tithus will go through as well. Just wait for there you go, the system to catch up with us. The um the data crystals are failing by the way, so that's that's why this isn't quite running at um twenty one oh six speeds. Certainly not because I'm emulating an Amiga from nineteen eighty six wouldn't be the case. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, so for me, because I don't really know what uh, high or low level of any of these um, things would really signify. Um, it doesn't really give me much uh, narrative information, I'd say. Okay, so we've done all that. Um, central processing is a good place to look, isn't it? Um, stuff gets uh, popped into there every... Oh yeah, okay. Data inventory ref 134985. Data inventory. CP information regarding Antarctic continent and culture. Stroke a compendium of DB analysis. The Antarctic continent and the culture that has been tailored for it blurred some traditional distinctions. Land and sea. And technology for under ocean work at depth is highly developed. Ants were believed to be comfortable in a wide range of extremely harsh environments. From high polar plateau, fierce winds, whiteout and blizzard to deep Antarctic Ocean. 
extreme cold and pressure as well as relatively high altitude. Much work went on under the Ross and Weddell ice tongues as well, indicating a strong technology for using ice. Ant society is ferociously egalitarian, individualistic, idiosyncratic and private. The combination of their technological and scientific acumen and their jealous regard for privacy made them their object of envy and naturally hatred. Yet the world needed the ants, so their privacy was tolerated. Interesting. So why did the world feel it needed the people of Antarctica? I wonder. Oh, I guess because they exported? What were they exporting? Um, I wonder. What resources did they have that the rest of the world... Oh, I guess they grew crystals. We found that out, didn't we? So if Antarctica were... Um, providing the resources for their um, for the rest of the world's uh, computer systems, uh, then that would be a big a big deal. Okay, I think I'll just I'm gonna check back through stuff. What time are we at? Okay, uh, this this stream has gone actually really really quickly. Um, thank you for joining me for it. Go for a little bit longer. I um I feel further from the end of this story than I did last time I played, which is interesting. So I feel like we're getting quite a lot of um exposition, um, which is interesting and is making connections that I think makes the this fictional world seem a lot more credible. Um, but it also has slowed progress to down to a crawl, which is um, it's kind of an interesting side effect of this, um, uh, I don't know, divided um, story system, where uh, things aren't, things are doled out um, in different contexts, rather than within uh, one, one context of a, um, like a third person narration. Um, so it's kind of both potentially more sophisticated in its intertextuality but also um, less sophisticated than just a good um, a good straightforward narrative that that weaves this stuff into the uh, the context and the action so it's an interesting thing to uh, to contemplate overall but I'd say the um, the overall experience of picking our way through the the uh, the different sections that we need to make sense of it, what's going on, um, is not not overall satisfying. Okay, I think we just need to go back to home then. So I think we've been everywhere else at this point. Okay, it looks like we're still sort of trading um, entry for entry um, across the different databases. The limits of the city were some 23 kilometres north of the tower. Peter and the others sat in a semicircle around a portable hollow disc, watching the Warren map grow and alter. Scale it up, Peter said. Someone made an adjustment and the Springfield overview, the complex layers of streets and corridors, plazas and RCs, the intense complexity of the tower vicinity all vanished, replaced by a smaller, more detailed section. Where are we? Shem asked. Did Shem have an accent? Maybe Shem had an accent last time, but not today. We're not on this section. If any local nodes are monitoring map use, we don't want to call attention to ourselves. We'll start here and gradually move into the area of interest. That way we'll look like an or any ordinary user. Peter walked over to the map his figure visible in black backlit outline. Move east a little, he said, and the view shifted as if they were moving slowly at low altitude over the warrens, which blinked off one at a time until only one remained. Now down, level seven. Again the view shifted, and with it the alphanumeric data hanging in the air nearby changed. Okay, I'm not sure what context that slots into. Um, okay, we've got more. Let's just keep reading this. JR is... Who is JR? 
Jimmy Radix? Oh. Oh no. I kind of don't want to revisit this moment. I've already, I feel like I've already said goodbye to Jimmy and it was, it was pretty sad. Um, okay, here we go. Jimmy Radix was locked into a chair. Behind him, a panel reflected a complex array of physiological, emotional and psychological real-time data in a series of coloured bands, cubes and curves. Jimmy was mumbling, his words barely understandable. Peter's gone, he said. He's gone. Then, more clearly, he said, Goodbye, Peter. You can't fool me. I'm young. The colours behind him faded, and suddenly a soft, insistent voice was speaking. Intrusion. There is an intrusion into decor, decatur, node housing. Sexist reports, unauthorised entry. There is an intrusion. Okay. That's kind of wild out of context, isn't it? Interesting. So these really aren't going in. They're going in some kind of order, but not, uh, not chronological order for sure. ENC troops dispatched to Springfield Warren's West found their quarry fled. First reports from the field indicated that Peter Devore and his entire entourage had escaped the Warren possibly with and help, although this was not confirmed. It was a dark night. Furthermore, local nodes were behaving erratically, so tracking was difficult. However, projections from the Chicago node AI indicated the fugitives may have fled toward the Decatur node, and the commanding sergeant dispatched a squad to investigate. A light snow was falling, and the NP transport failed two kilometres from Decatur, so by the time the squad arrived at the housing, there was no one in sight. Examination of the surface outside the housing revealed numerous footprints, but the bloodhound chemosensors could not confirm they belonged to the fugitives. Nonetheless, there were indicators, indications that someone had bypassed the Decatur sexist, so the squad entered the node housing unit. The troops were carrying standard neurophage weapons set on high power. All were competent troops skilled in the use of such equipment. Once inside, Sexist denied anyone had gained access within the past 200 hours. The troops carried out a thorough search. Okay, so that seems to be the uh, immediate aftermath of uh, Peter and gang fleeing from where they were, and then, oh, so that's all the information we've had. Interesting. Um, so, I mean, that that uh, hinged on some military action, so do we need to go to the military section? Apparently not. Okay, we'll do the usual run then. Top left, bottom right. Nope. Silink. Tech. Uh, not a sausage. Well, this is intriguing. So I guess we're playing Hunt the Entry again, aren't we? So... Not in history. Well, there's not many more categories, really. Um, there's nothing in military. Did we check life support? Well, let's do it anyway. I don't think we checked it this round. So at the same, there's no other characters added in there. No, we have all, we've visited all these before. Uh, but I don't think there's anything new to find out for. Um, 
the others. Geography and central processing, I guess. There might be something in one of those. Not in geography, anyway. Oh, here we go. Sexist alert. Um, ref 563238. Report filed. 17092075 at 183512 stroke chai link stroke deck. Sexist alert. Security system for Decatur node housing reported. Parentheses ref number 3287487 at 521, in parentheses, tampered entry coding via palm pad, type unknown, sexist noted error file diversion, parentheses, hex FA87334 B matrix downlink, in parentheses, type of entry unknown, number of entries unknown, time of entry unknown, time delay of report unknown, sexist deck chai, parentheses, Stat condition for orange fourth level hierarchical end parentheses, uh, and that's the end of the entry. Well, that uh, uh, didn't seem to provide anything of particular interest or use. Um, but it's some kind of evidence. So some of the stuff that appears is kind of evidence after the fact of what Homer has just told us in a in a more narrative fashion. Well, here we go. Um, so we've we've inserted an entry from Peter Devore slightly earlier in the the timeline. Okay, that's where we are on the far right there. That just suggests going north. North. Rover's boy. Well, north. Rover's boy squeaked a little with surprise. That's right. That just said north towards Chicago. They expect us to be going south, the direct way. Oh. They'll guess we're going to double A and double A is set. <gasps> They're going to Chicago where I am. What about the LP colony colonies? Peter repeated. Sure, but they. Ah, uh, yes, perhaps. Nice thought, Peter. Very nice. Let me put something, someone on it. Peter nodded, smiling, as Thatcher set to work. He established connection with the node and dumped his file. <laughs> I mean, we all need to do it every now and again, don't we? That might confuse them for a few. D that might confuse them for a few days, he said, turning around. Though I doubt it. If they query central processing, they'll discover the shunt, and maybe they'll be watching the shuttles instead of our route. The light was not bright, but all the equipment was sharply defined. As long as we got someone from the asked from the back. Peter smiled grimly. The interesting thing about such node housings as this is that they represent... Oh, I got my voices confused. The interesting thing about such node housings as this is they represent one of the few places in the entire grid that lack good monitoring. Node will catch on sooner or later, but Thatcher says we do have a breather. Thatcher stood up. We have made a study of world there and its subsystems, he said. Decatur Node has long appeared to have some of, the, some, have some of critical areas blanked. Further, it is remarkably easy to bypass the local sexist log and the man named Mentor down in Double A knew how. So here we are, inside the local brain. A hollow is installed with minimal patch. Even so, we estimate two hours maximum before local systems exceed their maintenance limits and begin to question our presence here. Then it will be all hit the grid. Hit the grid. Then it will all hit the grid. <laughs> the grid will hit the van. And we'd better be gone. But we will be gone by then. North towards Chicago. Then what? Laren wanted to know. Then we keep going. Keep going where? Keep going north. North? Yes, we're going over the pole. Or I should say, under it. There was silence. A light blinked somewhere, softly, rhythmically, like a pulse. Under the pole? Shem said in the darkness. Thatcher's smile was barely visible. Very poor coverage up there. Our own people in Chicago will supply us. Clothing, transport and so on. Look here. He indicated the hollow, which shifted again. 
the primary NS corridor ended abruptly. Here, the termination of Daly Boulevard is where the Chicago-New Orleans corridor was sealed off in the late 30s. Beyond this wall is a straight run north. It goes all the way to the Milwaukee Warrens, but we won't be going that far. He paused to look around. I shouldn't need to remind you all that Chicago is a dangerous place these days. We'll have to stick together. It won't be easy moving through, moving this many people through at once, but we have some experience in these matters. Yeah, River mur murmured. That explains where my uncle Art went, maybe. Perhaps, Thatcher agreed. In fact, there are more discontented people inside the intercorp sphere than the council would like them, like known. Double A does not have a lot of room to spare. We're careful whom we help, but quite a few have come to us. This, this, the, this though, will be the largest single group ever brought out by the Underground Railroad. Okay, I like the twist. So they're going to the North Pole instead of the South Pole. Well, that calls for both a sip of water and perhaps a check of geography. Okay, nothing in geography. Um, central processing was referenced, I believe. Let's have a look at central processing. I feel like we've only just got to um, an interesting plot point, so maybe that will be uh, expanded upon. So we have a um, an entry here for local node network, ref four three six four three. Local node network redecatur NWA parentheses ref Springfield Warren in parentheses CP stroke status screen four Chinese node temporarily down. Ref Mind War, Daily Boulevard. Suspected sabotage. Temporary routing via Montreal, Detroit, Fort Wayne. SATCOM 326323 and a position 32898. Nanosecond Zulu. End. I think Zulu is a is a time zone that is referenced. I think that's why that particular word is in there. Um okay, back to Homer. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. No. Okay. Oh, Homer give advice. Let's see if Homer's got. The Grunge Point Five was the location for a major technological development in the colonization of space. Cytech reference level three. Thanks, Hamer. SciTech. Um, Lagrange Point. LP. LP5. Um, LP5. Huh. Wonder if we get a picture of anything. That'd be cool. We do. There you go. That looks like a space station with pods. Okay. General Science Technology Information, current entry, LP5. The LP5s are Earth habitats at the Lagrange Point 5. The first, a scientific frontier and low gravity manufacturing facility, was completed in 2002. There are four altogether, each with a capacity for 10,000 individuals. They were a popular refuge for over six decades for individuals wanting a different way of life and relative independence from intercorp control. The two most important LPs, were number two, established by the Natural Life Movement, and number four, four home of the so-called Second Mormon Migration. I think there's some baggage attached to both of those. Original plans were for a total of 17 habitats, but declining world populations caused the plans to be delayed. Hmm. Yeah, so that's where um, Wanda is, is going, was going. Um, who's a character that Peter had been in contact with telepathically. Um, but I, don't, I still don't know how that relates to anything else, uh, to be perfectly honest. It was a motivating factor um, for Peter's desire to uh, free the human race from its uh, bodily constraints.
Um, I'll just go back to home again. Okay, yes, yeah, so at least one thing we've uncovered. All right. Yeah, I think we're coming up to two hours of streaming now, so I'll um, I'll read this. Let's see if it unlocks anything else. Um, and go from there. That just said, you've been over these arguments many times. You must understand that while the Intercorp counts as on the whole a benevolent organisation, it has goals and priorities which do conflict with ours. There are certain areas of human endeavour the Council sees as hostile to its own survival. In such circumstances, they react with, shall we say, enthusiasm. The truth is that they have Jimmy Radix, and his chances of surviving their interrogation are small. Peter started up. What? What are you saying? Even in the hollow light, his pallor was visible. He knew what he was in for, Thatcher said quietly. He believed in you, in what you were working toward. He was willing to make a sacrifice. If it hadn't been for Jimmy Radix, we would not have gotten this far. But we need him. I need him. He can't. We've got to find out. Thatcher held out his hand. We can check, perhaps. It's dangerous, though, and I want you to understand the consequences. Any even roundabout query to the system might tip the local nodes off to our location. I don't care, Peter said. Jimmy Radix is my friend. Thatcher nodded. I'll use keyboard input. While well, everyone here has their typing style, their hand on file, mine is not. We may put them off the scent for a while. He produced a keypad that was not of intercourt manufacture and tapped quickly as a, at a series of coded phrases. Okay, so we're still tidy, tidying up stuff from, from last time, really. Um, so, SciTech, maybe? Hollow imaging, okay. General Science and Technology Information, Current Entry, Hollow Imaging. Holographic projection is the standard, if archaic method, of presenting visual information. Similar or repetitive information may appear the same to multiple viewers. A user may request any information accessible by local node in hollow image. This includes geography, life support, Edmod, what's that genealogical, psychology, or Cytech graphic information. User may request updated warren mapping, for example. Any configuration changes monitored by a major node are automatically entered into the visual data, which may then appear in 2D map, 3D perspective, real-time 50% reduction, or colour-coded comparison matrix format. Furthermore, user may request map of meteorological or other transitory data by date and time. Okay, um, so we d we d hadn't got many hooks to f to um, to dangle things off from that last little bit with home, had we? So um, I wonder if anything is going to be. Will that be? That's what I wonder is. Will that have been enough to? Uh, Give us another entry to unlock a bit more. Yep. Okay. The hollow snapped off suddenly, and darkness hit the small room like a bomb. Thatcher spoke urgently. We better move fast. The NC will be here in a minute. A minute. Get your assigned buddy, and we'll go. They formed pairs, silent and well disciplined. Thatcher led them down a spiral staircase. Below were equipment rooms, storage bins, racks of crystal memory, graphic hollow processors and local node controllers, dimly lit by a series of old-fashioned orange tubes along the ceiling. At the end of a short corridor, a door marked with warning signs and an impressive magnetic lock indicated an emergency override inspection corridor. Thatcher produced a small device and within seconds the lock snapped. Overhead, the sound of the door opening 
and the thump of rapid footsteps told them the ENC had arrived. The door slid up, and two by two Thatcher shoved the group through, counting them off as he did so. When only he and Peter were left, they exchanged glances. Laren? Thatcher asked in a quick whisper. Peter looked around. Overhead voices were querying the system. I don't know, he whispered. He ran a few steps back the way they had come. Laren was sitting on the floor at the foot of the steps holding her ankle. When she saw Peter, she tried to stand, but her foot twisted out from under her. Peter grabbed her and hauled her forcibly along, limping badly. The voices grew louder, then fainter. Apparently some of the ENC had gone outside, but footsteps overhead moved toward the spiral stair. Peter hauled Laren through the door, and Thatcher pressed the closed patch. It slid into place, and he went to work with his device once more. I've changed the program a little, he said. Uh, it'll take them some time to get through. Meantime, they should conclude we went outside. Come on. He led them down an ancient and poorly maintained inspection crawlway. Bare dirt spilled through the rough patches where the laser drill had slipped into its settings. A thin trickle of groundwater flowed down the centre. Thatcher put one of Laren's arms over his shoulders. Peter took the other. They moved swiftly down the tunnel, which curved gently to the left. Along the upper third of the left-hand wall was a set of six thick conduit pipes for old fibre optic trunk lines. Niches set every few hundred metres housed disused repeater stations. Wait, Peter said. He was gasping for breath. Laren said, He twisted it on the stair. She said, I can't walk. Leave me here. No, Peter said sharply. His voice softened. Not only does your voice lack conviction, Laren, but we are not leaving anyone. Thatcher, what were these conduits for? Thatcher consulted a small palm screen. Primary in instruction routes from Chicago to Fidecatur node. Could we interrupt service? Peter, I suggested. Thatcher smiled. Perhaps we could. Data still flows through here. They moved on the next repeater niche and examined the housing. Well, well, look here. They looked where he was pointing with his light. What is it? Laren asked. Rat scat, Thatcher asked. Eh. <laughs> Sorry, I just can't believe I had to say rat scat out loud. Our friends, the rats, may be just what we need. See how they've gnawed at the corners of the housing here? A minute structural failure could result from such damage lustily. There, that should do it. Let's go. I didn't see anything, Baron said. Thatcher pointed at his palm screen. It was dead. This was linked by induction. Nothing's moving through there now. Our ENC friends back there will be busy for a while. They moved off. The others were far ahead, waiting at an intersection. Thatcher indicated a right turn, and then they moved on. Thatcher's screen lit again in the new tunnel, and he consulted it from time to time, making turns when necessary. Finally, they stopped. We're under a subnode northeast of Springfield. We can't make good time like this, but it's relatively safe. ENC cops back at Decatur have apparently given up on the emergency door, but CP will send a probe down into the tunnel to find that break we made. I'd say the time has come to go topside. I'm moving intuitively here, Thatcher said. But now it's time to do something surprising. Let's go. He opened a hatch. Inside was a small equipment bay. Hollow charts flickered in real time along a monitor wall. The group moved through the room and up another spiral stair. Again, the door opened. Light snow was falling outside. Okay, I think they've made it to the uh, the Arctic Circle. We've got another entry, Enk. Oh, from the military. Okay, we'll we'll keep reading until the um, the Homer entries run out. The ENC troops investigating the affair at Decatur Node moved in a confused tangle of narrow focus light. The housing was empty though, and the assault programmer assigned to detecting unauthorised presence, failed to find anything significant. He just turned to report when a warning diode flickered on his logic probe. I've got a good, I've got a good read, Captain, 
he said. The ENC captain, who was bored with the evening's events and disinterested in anything short of getting back to his home warren and dinner, glanced at the screen. Rats, he said. These old repeaters fail all the time, it's always the rats. Then if I CP to send down a probe and repair it. These repeaters are offline anyway. CP can notify the maintenance AI and fix it. Yes, sir. What about the fugitives? They must have slipped outside somehow. I think they've got an ant helping them, which means they'll be hard to track. He rubbed his eyes wearily. Well, let's get on with it. More? Beautiful. Okay. Thatcher called a short war council. We need to keep warm, he said. We're going to take public transportation, so we need to cover. I suggest a special interest group, Midwest, Northern Hemisphere, Winter Fauna. If anyone asks, we're looking for owls. On public transportation? Rover asked with a smile. Thatcher took him seriously. We're headed towards Springfield North Park. Owls, owls will be in winter plumage. They will be hunting mice, so once again... The rodent comes to our rescue. Winter plumage means their feathers will be white. Don't answer questions unless you have real details. Smile. There's a transport drop-off 12 kilometres east. Put up hoods and for Helix's sake, make sure person warrants are off. There was nervous laughter at this last warning. Then they moved out into the snow. Many of them had never been topside in winter and had never personally seen snow. Yet there was little horseplay. Be seeing a lot of this stuff, I guess, Shem said to Rover. Rover grunted, not necessarily. A lot of double A is underground, like here. As you go up, you don't see much, though in some places the ice is six to ten thousand feet, feet thick. I'm not sure I like that. There were no buildings, no lights, no voices, only darkness and soft wind, gentle snow, the hush of woods and fields, the music of small creeks running under a thin layer of ice. Once a shape passed swiftly a few feet overhead. What was that? What was that? Someone asked. An owl. That was an owl. Didn't you see the white feathers? Their pace was slow. Baron's ankle had swollen and finally, around 9.30, they had to stop. Thatcher came over. Let me look at that. We don't have much time before the last shuttle. He took her ankle in his hands, probing gently with his thumbs. Here, he said pressing against a tendon, and here. He removed a small, flat kit from one pocket. Put your foot on this, he said. She did, and holding her ankle, he pressed once more. A brief white glow came from the device, which he then replaced in his pocket. OK, he said. Five minutes and we can go. What is that? Peter asked. Thatcher shrugged. Double A can be a dangerous place, with glaciers of deep hidden crevasses. Ice breaks underfoot, whiteouts and sudden blizzards come up and make travel difficult. Injuries like this are common. We develop techniques for dealing with them. It's a simple induction device, combined with the right kind of tissue manipulation and energy, the device can heal rapidly. Should be alright now. Soon they were moving again, and 90 minutes later they arrived at the isolated oasis of light that indicated the transport drop-off. A cleared space in the wilderness with some local lighting in the reflected sunlight spectrum. It appeared as a brightly over moonlit oval, despite the overcast. Ten minutes to spare, Thatcher said. They huddled together, while Thatcher and Peter conferred. Thatcher did not seem to notice the cold, but Peter wrapped his arms around himself and shivered. The induction field here allows a small tap, Thatcher said, looking at his palm screen. Interesting. They sent out a routine repair request for Decatur. It looks like the rats did it. They've explained the intrusion alarm as rats too. So far, so good. The next dangerous point is Lincoln, where we enter the corridor. Everyone knows what we're doing, Peter said. We're going out watching. The transport arrived with a low hum. It was a 30-seat ground-effect vehicle from the small feeder line that covered this area. The drop-off served Niantic North, a small, partially underground community. There were others on the bus. Peter tapped in their destination and purpose, giving Decatur SIG for natural history as their point of origin. It was unlikely that Chicago Node 
would question Decatur for confirmation. The bus lifted to fifteen feet and glided smoothly between the trees over its predetermined track. Twenty minutes later, it set down at the Lincoln drop-off, and they trooped off into the darkness, talking about owls. The two strangers on the bus had ignored them. Well, we're getting a lot of um, a lot of detail about their adventures north, which is cool. Um, but I really do think, from the speed that things developed um, earlier on, yeah, that's the end of this section for now. Right, I think this is a great time to leave it for today. Thank you very much for joining me for this stream. I was. Uh, mostly convinced that we would finish the story today, but it seems there's much more to come. Um, so this will take a minute. So we'll we'll say our goodbyes here. I'll um, if I can I come out of this window safely. I think I can. Yeah, I think we're good. Um, let me just say um, hello and thank you to anybody who's hanging around in chat. Yeah, I can see um, Adept W and Odysseus. Um, are still there from the beginning of the stream. We've got another TV, another TV viewer, Alien Gathering and Alien Conglomeration. All the A's today, which suggests there might be a few bots in chat, but once again, you're very welcome. Thank you for joining me. Um, we've saved our game, which is very important because I did forget that once. Um, right, so it looks like we'll be back for another stream of Portal again um, to, to see where the story takes us next. I'm not confident how many how many more streams um, we'll have to do to to get through the story, but I am I'm suitably intrigued by it. And I kind of want to know how it's gonna tie itself up. I hope I kind of hoping it does something interesting with this computer interfa interface when it gets to a, a kind of a final moment. But I guess we'll find out. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you very much for joining me. If you enjoyed this stream. I will continue streaming here, so you're, you're very welcome to, to follow me uh, on this channel. Um, I think it'll probably be two weeks before the next stream, just because the the week coming up is going to be a busy one. Um, but I um, I let people know through the public posts on my Patreon. Um, I try to update the uh, About page on my YouTube channel, so that's Cat Sequences on YouTube. Um, with the date of any upcoming stream as well. So there's two places you can find out, but the easiest way really is to follow me on Twitch to get a notification when I next go live. But I'm expecting it to be about two weeks from, from today. Um, and if you want to catch up on any previous streams, um, if you want to find playthroughs of adventure games um, and RPGs, um, those things can be found on my YouTube channel as well. And the link is in my uh, description on the Twitch page. So you're you're welcome to go from there. So until next time, take care. Bye bye.